Hi and welcome to this series of videos on demand forecasting for revenue management. If you're watching this video because you have viewed some of the previous videos and you want to learn more about revenue management, you're in the right place. If you're watching this video uh, because you're just interested in demand forecasting for supply chain or any other business application, I think you'll find this very useful, though we will stick very close to uh, the application of revenue management. If you have viewed some of the videos on revenue management models and techniques, uh, we've talked a lot about the math behind how you come up with prices and inventory levels to maximize revenue. We've also said that accurate forecasts are very important, but we haven't talked at all about how you come up with those forecasts. So that's what we're going to do in this series of videos. And let me say, as a business application, so this isn't a math class, this is how we improve revenue for our business. For a business application, the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do to improve revenue in your revenue management area is improve forecasts. Yes, we can always tweak models, optimization models to come up with better inventory levels, but the biggest bang for your buck is in improving demand forecasting. And it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, we're going to talk about how we come up with where we spend our time to make sure we're getting the best forecast that come up with the best controls. So we're not going to talk about forecasting for the sake of forecasting. We're going to focus on where do we need to get the most accurate forecast so we're coming up with the best inventory levels. And let me give you an example. So uh, if you're an airline revenue management department and your flights are generally going out 50% full, you really don't need to spend a lot of time on forecasting because the answer is the same. Uh, you, you would basically take all customers at any price level. Uh, on the other hand, if you're in a very high demand market where you're constantly turning away customers because you don't have enough capacity, that's where your real opportunity is and that's where you really want to get your forecasting right. So we all have limited resources, limited time. When you're approaching forecasting, not just from a modeling, but how you run your business, you want to make sure that you spend the appropriate time in the appropriate areas so that you're really you know, getting to the goal of maximizing revenue. The goal isn't really to get the most accurate forecast. It, the goal is to provide the proper inputs to your optimization models that result in maximum revenue. So let me put up a couple of uh, notes here if I can find it. I did this. There it is. Okay, so just a couple of things before we get into the various models and techniques. The first, the first piece of advice I have from doing this many years is understand what you're forecasting. So it seems, it seems obvious, right? Well, we want to forecast demand. Well, in revenue management, and I suspect in a lot of other business applications, we're really not trying to determine how many people will specifically show up at a specific specific fare level for a spe specific flight. What we really want is the distribution of demand. So let me see if my pen's working here. So we really want mu and sigma. We're estimating the distribution. So uh, you can go back to some of these videos, but you know, let's say we, we assume that the demand is distributed normally. We want to estimate the parameters that define that distribution. So in revenue management, what we're really forecasting is the mean and variance of that demand. That's a little bit different than saying, I want to know exactly how many people are going to show up on a specific flight at a specific time. Now, if this throws you a little bit, don't worry. You won't, you won't lose um, any, any value of these videos. But whatever your application is, be clear on what you're forecasting. And often I see, particularly since the people who are doing the forecasting are different from the analysts or different from the people working on the optimization models, the people doing the forecasting tend to be a little bit detached from the actual goal of the, uh, of the effort and focus on forecasting things that are a little bit off from what the real goal is. So make sure you know what you're, you're, uh, you're forecasting. The other thing is, what is the objective? And remember, this is, this is a business application, right? 
Um, and we're going to focus even in these videos not on all the math, but on the what we need to do to achieve our business objective. For airline revenue management, it's maximizing revenue. It's pretty simple. Uh, we want to come up with the set of controls that maximize revenue over time. That means we want forecasts that achieve that goal. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means, but um, it, and it kind of goes back to the, the empty flights versus the full flights. If I'm spending a lot of time getting great accurate forecasts on low demand flights, and my accuracy might be very good because it's easier to forecast those flights, I've missed the point because I need to be spending my time on the revenue opportunities. And those may be the, the more difficult areas to get accurate forecasts, but that's the objective, is to provide inputs to your optimization models where there's an opportunity to achieve, um, to improve revenue. The other thing is start with the data. So if you're, you know, if you're already working with models, um, the models are kind of given to you and you're, you're thinking about how to improve the accuracy. But if you're just starting out, you're thinking about, I have a problem, I need to forecast demand, um, and I see a lot of times uh, students particularly will choose the model and say, well, I'm going to use either a time series or a causal model or whatever. And once they get into it, they realize that the data doesn't support that choice. You have to start with the data because the, the availability of the data and how well behaved the data is will determine the appropriate model. In revenue management, we almost always exclusively use time series models. And it, it may seem counterintuitive that you know, we really want, um, you know, we're really trying to forecast uh, elasticity and, and demand based on different price changes. So why aren't we using causal models with those kind of variables, income and employment and things? Well, the reason is that data is very hard to obtain and the relationship between demand and those variables is very hard to make. And what we get from time series models works well in our optimization models. So when you're setting out to choose the model, take a look at the data and see what you have. If you're, and you know, conversely, if you're choosing a time series model and you don't have a time series, if you don't have a lot of history based on time and seasonality and what happened in the past, then your time series models are not going to be appropriate either. Generally in revenue management, you know, we do have that history or we start collecting uh, that history to, to fit the model. Um, yeah, and let me just talk a little bit more about that. Sometimes a, an airline will um, purchase a, a, a revenue management system and go to their vendor and say, okay, we want to set this up. And once they look at the inputs to the model, they'll, they'll, they'll realize that they don't have the time series data at the appropriate level. And what will often happen is at the beginning of the project, because these projects take you know months to implement anyway, they'll start collecting the data at the appropriate level. So they may not have the history, so they'll start you know collecting the data to, to fit the, the model at the beginning of the project so that by the time the implementation is done, there's at least you know some amount of data that can start to um, feed the models and come up with uh, forecasts. The other thing is this be realistic. You know, um, what we're trying to do in forecasting, it's so much, it's so different from optimization models. I find researchers, you know, in revenue management on the forecasting side and the optimization side, they're sort of, they sort of have two different um, worlds to live in. Optimization models, you can kind of prove to optimality or, or not prove to optimality. It's much more, in my view, um, a, a tangible, a, you can get to a tangible result. You can either say you have a good model, uh, it's better than other models, and you can compare it that way. Forecasting is very difficult because you're, you're, you're trying to hit a moving target and it's hard to know when you've actually come to the right model. 
because forecast accuracy, first, first of all, it's difficult to measure forecast accuracy, and you're always trying to improve. You never get to the optimal model. There's really not that concept of, you know, you can get to unbiased forecasts and things like that, but in business, we want to get to the, the best model that works on average um, or, or produces the best forecast on average in all the different situations that we have to forecast, um, and it can be quite challenging. And the other thing about real, being realistic is, and it goes along with this previous um, comment about the data is, you know, if you're doing a time series model, let's see if I can draw this here. So that's supposed to be, wow, that's terrible, huh? Let me try that again. Um, let's say I have a y and x axis here. This is time. And I have a time series, you know, something, something like this. And I have a time series that goes like this. So, you know, every period, let's say every day, I get an extra customer. So this is one customer, two customer, three customer, four, five. Well, then at T plus one to forecast what's going to happen here, well, that's pretty, that's going to be pretty easy to do because there's a nice well-behaved pattern. On the other hand, let's say my data looks like this. You know, it's, it's, it's all over the place. There's just supposed to be one in each of these periods. Um, but I think you get the idea. You know, what's my pattern? And if you're not dealing with data that gives you a pattern, then it's going to be very difficult to come up with an accurate forecast. So when I, when I say be realistic, I mean your, your forecasting model will only be as good as the data that you have. And that could be a quality of data issue. It could just be the behavior of the market. Um, some markets just are very predictable. Customer behavior is very predictable. Some markets and some at some price levels are just very difficult to forecast because they're they're not stable. They're not the behavior of the customers changes from period to period, from season to season. These will be where you um, will have your most difficulty. But remember, go back to go back to the objective. If this is in a market that um, is not providing an additional revenue opportunity, then spending a lot of time here really won't give you a lot of value. This one may be easier to forecast and may be the best opportunity. So, so fit your, fit your uh, or adjust your attention, your focus to the uh, areas where you can have the best bang for your buck and be realistic about what you're going to get. So this may feed the way you price the market. It may feed the way the uh, analysts manage the market. If they can't count on accurate forecasts, then they may be more conservative in the way they hold out for additional demand. So um, in here, they might be much more aggressive. So if they know this I forget what we said. Is this the sixth customer? If they've only sold five seats and they're really confident that there's another high fare customer out there, they may be very, very aggressive at holding out for this customer. Here, you know, this might have a, be a very wide variance, and that's where this distribution comes in. If we're, you know, if the revenue management analyst sees that there's six customers forecast, but a very wide variance, he may be satisfied with taking the fifth customer and then selling the next seat to a lower fare customer. So it all feeds together, you know, right? The, the forecast, the optimization model, the revenue management analyst, the pricing analyst, they're all trying to achieve the same goal. And we have to make sure that when we're fitting all these pieces together, everybody keeps that objective in mind. And the forecasters don't just try to get accurate forecasts for the sake of forecast. Um, you want to be you want to be connected to that uh, end game. Let's see what else I had here. Um, yeah, well, we're going to go through the you know causal versus time series. Uh, I'm going to go through a, a a set of time series models, and we're going to go through each one of them and do an example of these time series models. They're the 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 models that are most used in the industry today. Um, and we're, we're not going to go terribly deep into each one. I want to make sure you have an overview of all the models that are out there. And you'll see some of them are dirt simple and some of them are really complicated. And your choice of that model, if you're an airline, you know, how do you know if you want the simple model or the complicated model? It depends a lot on the data that you have to support that model. So we'll get into the details in the next video. This was just kind of an overview and I hope to see you back.